I think first off it was a full board meeting, which is always important. We have our monthly meetings, but the focus of attention was on the board's response to the proposed budget cuts in the executive budget. As we know, the governor uh, does not like the budget that he's forced to present, but that's what it is under law. So we are looking at a $300 million cut between TOPS, uh, GO grants, and uh, do dollars for our operating budget, which is significant. So the board was very uh, vocal about uh, making sure that we bring that to the attention of legislators and the public, and hopefully get some redress. We're talking about this amazing budget shortfall that's crippling to our institutions. And our pie-in-the-sky hope is that the legislature can figure out a way to get us back to where we were last year, yeah. which is dead last in the southern regional average, which has a 1.5, probably one point, probably more than that now, a maintenance backlog for our crumbling infrastructure. And that's what we're, that's our goal. How sad is that when we need, when we need so much more? And guess what? Last year's numbers are still, what, about 60% of the numbers, dollar for dollar, 10 years ago. Yeah for what this state does to support higher education. And when you have this graphic, I asked Carolyn to give it to me, talking about, I mean, heck, if you don't care about people, Where's if you don't those, care yeah. about education, dollars and cents tells you, you better fund your higher education, because it's gonna pay off in the long run. Right. Terrence, thank, thank you. Could I ask Mr. Chairman one more question? Yeah. Terrence, to, to just kind of bring home the fund, the, uh, would you go to the next one, the unfunded mandate part? That no, mandated cost increase, that's, Standing still, we're going to go in the hole, $10 billion on top of the mandated cost that we're already uh, taking each year. Correct. To the point where we are now sending back 74% of any dollars that each year is uh, on balance across the systems. 74 cents of every dollar from the state goes back to the state for these mandated costs. The most outrageous part of it, though, is that every other agency in the state, every other agency in the state gets their mandated cost increases covered each year. Is that correct? That's correct. Everyone but higher education. The last time that, the last time higher education received uh, mandated cost accommodations was in 2004. Eight, nine, like that. I'm sorry, 2008, 2008. Yeah, well, 2008. Yes. So not only is this a problem, we have been singled out to yet take another hit on top of the general reductions in state funds than this insidious and hidden cost of $10 million more dollars. What is the total cost of the mandated expenses we're sending back? $640 million. $640 million of the money we get goes back. And our flagship is the donor. Yeah, I think, and I many of our many of the institution, I think our flagship is. Reed and David is correct. There are two or three or four institutions that are giving back more than they're getting. Right. Yep. What kind of business model is that? They ask us to run like a business, and then they do that? It is inconsistent with logic that we would be talking about mandated cost increases increasing only for higher education and no what, one else. But there's so no when institution. you get the chance to express uh, your concerns to your legislator, start there. Yeah, and nobody can find that to be fair. No one, not even them. Uh, again, let me, and I, I'm, I'm recognizing just one second, Mr. Seal. Yes, I want everybody over here to understand and be clear, you made a great, you made a great point, Regent David, about just getting back. We should never be happy with just getting back to where we were last year. But last year was the first year in 10 years, in, in, in nine years, that we were fully funded. <clears throat> 10 years ago, our budget was 1.5 billion, Terrence? That's correct. And today it's 740. With, without tops, that's correct. Yeah, without tops, 740 million. That's if we get the, the revenue. If, yeah, the exactly. Of so yeah, right now it's less. Uh, keep that in mind, uh, uh, members. I mean, that's that's a tough, tough nut to crack. And 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 I don't ever want to be satisfied with getting back to where we were last year. We ought to not only fund higher ed, but fund it. Uh, ahead of a lot of more uh, uh, these other programs that we're funding, Mr. C, oh, go ahead. Uh, just, uh, just uh, a quick note, not to uh, interfere with Terrence's presentation, but the other thing to keep in mind is you mentioned 1.5 billion 10 years ago. The mandated costs at that point were about 200, 250 million. So we had about 1.3 billion to allocate. 
Now, if you take the mandated costs out, we have about $232 million to allocate. So the number has gone from $1.3 billion to about $232 million. That's the dramatic number that we have to focus on. Thank you. Yeah. And, and uh, Mr. Seal? Mr. Ginn, um, we have uh, all seen the, ac the efforts to lament the proposed budget cuts. But I don't know that we have seen uh, any product by the Board of Regents or the staff of the Board of Regents to explain to the legislature the probable consequences of the cuts, either system-wide or institution by institution. My question would be, w would it lie within the expertise of your department to, uh, to, to begin to explain the consequences of the budget cuts and, and to let the legislature understand just how serious the matter is, especially for, uh, for some of the poorer funded schools. Regents Field, thank you very much for that question and, to, and for asking me that for the benefit of the entire committee. We, were, we have worked with public affairs for years now. We provided numerous publications to the legislature on that, and I'm happy to send you all a packet of all the information that we have shared with them over the years. Uh, it's not for a lack of effort or a lack of telling them. It's a lack of them listening. So we have provided several um, uh, public announcements, uh, rallies, but you name it, we've done that and we've shared with them the effects of the cuts. And we have, again, pamphlets, brochures, videos, rallies. We've done that um, for the last, since I've been at Regents for the last five years. But, and I'm happy to share that with you and the entire board. And, and, and take your suggestions on, you know, on a different direction if you uh, have such, many, any. Yeah, I just uh, reasons to also want to mention that when we testify in front of appropriations and, and finance, what normally will happen is I will go first and give a broad overview presentation and each of the system presidents will come in and oftentimes campus by campus talk about where they are, what they are going to have to do, and the impact it has on students. So that information is made uh, very visible and very public. Sadly, uh, the legislators have not listened to it. Yeah. But, but I... Uh, you, anything else to add? I think we ought to bring it to another level. We got our system heads, we got our, our uh, uh, chancellors and presidents coming to the legislature every time we do that. I, I would like everyone on this committee, uh, 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 on this board, and every board, and every university, and every professor, and every student to have a copy of this chart that shows what higher education does <coughs> and have those people combined with what Regent Seal said is going to cost Nichols State $300,000 or $400,000 like it has in the last 10 to 15 years. But by doing that, we're going to lose our marine biology program. Or we're going to lose the money that we have for our arts program with the brand new uh, 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 Dan Ost Theater we have at Nichols that everybody's doing that you know we're going to lose stuff at louisiana tech uh in engineering that we've been providing so well at lsu you know in southern and grambling i think it's very important that we take this list right here and show them and hit people in the nose with it and when it's time for the budget here and for education don't just have the presidents and the system heads there. Have board members from our board, from all the system boards. Have the professors, have the students. I mean, heck, I would call a day off of that. They have not got the message and have, from people, but yet they wanted to change the name of a school in Natchitoches for a, a member that sat next to me, uh, Representative Long, and I had representatives say, oh, I got 200 letters. I can't vote for that. But you have this that's going to affect everybody. And they're not even blinking. They're not even blinking. We need to bring the heat. We need to make these people understand what it is. We need to make these legislators know. And if you get enough of their people from their district, if you get enough people that donate to their campaigns, 
in them hallways when it's there, trust me. Senator Ewing, Representative McDonald, we've been there. We know what it's like. But if, if we don't bring the heat, is it, but when the last thing we had that presentation where they showed the, the percentage of if you have a college education, the percentage of jobs, how many of those people actually get employed versus the ones, the non, and then you drop down to the, to the, the community college, then you drop down, it's stunning. What kind of an impact would, would cuts of that magnitude have on higher education in Louisiana? Well, the magnitude is, is enormous, but it's also uh, basically the fact that we've been taking budget cuts for 10 years. And so I, I said, you know, uh, 10 years ago, we basically were able to allocate $1.2 billion. This year, before the budget cuts, with all the costs that we have incurred, in the, uh, we are basically down to about $230 million. So uh, our institutions are suffering from a lack of uh, support from the legislature, and instead now the students and the tuition is really what's uh, bringing in the dollars to allow them to operate, and that's a sad state of affairs when you call them public higher ed. Talk a little bit about uh, the impact of uh, such costs as a mandated cost and what that means for the uh, budget of uh, all the public universities in the state. Right. Well, mandated costs is just like a business. You have uh, retirement costs, you have health care, things along those lines. But we have no control over them, and they have accelerated uh, dramatically over the past years. And so, for whatever reason, higher ed is the only agency in the state where the annual increases are not covered by the budget. We are forced to basically uh, put those uh, additional increases out to each of the campuses. So we suffer. Even if the budget stayed the same, we're looking at another 10 or 15 million dollar decline because of the fact that we have to pay the mandated cost. To put it in perspective, 75 cents out of every dollar that we get goes back to the state for mandated costs, leaving 25 cents for instruction, faculty salaries, uh, labs, internships. That's where we are. A high-profile price tag for higher education is the TOPS program. If TOPS were to be fully funded, what would that mean for the rest of higher education? Well, that's a really interesting question because uh, TOPS has to be funded from somewhere, the general fund, and they're looking at about $240 million. Um, we would hope, we would expect that the legislators find that elsewhere. Uh, my concern, quite frankly, is that they would reduce the operating budgets to fund TOPS. And as I pointed out, if you don't have faculty, if you don't have classes, if you don't have uh, internship opportunities, a TOPS scholarship doesn't do you much good. What is already happening with the spiral of uh, students uh, making decisions on to enroll in, uh, in the fall and also uh, faculty? Well, uh, both very good questions. In other words, we're right now uh, in March. I mean, February, March, and April is when students decide whether they're going to attend a university and where. So by the fact that they are looking at a, an 80% budget cut in TOPS and a 50% budget cut in GO grants, we know a lot of students are either not going to attend or the students are being courted by out-of-state universities. Same thing with faculty. Why would I want to come to a, a state where you've not had faculty increases in salary for years, where the benefits packages are lower to begin with, in fact, we're the lowest in the South, and at the same time, you have uncertainty about whether my position will even be there. So we're not being able to attract and retain the best faculty. Where does Louisiana rank in terms of funding higher education compared to other southern states and states across the country? Well, the southern states, uh, the southern region board, are the ones we compare ourselves to, the roughly 12 or 13 institutions that are uh, you know, from Virginia through uh, Louisiana. We rank either at the bottom or near the bottom in everything from uh, financing to graduation rates uh, to uh, the only reason we don't uh, rank at the bottom is in debt burdens because historically Louisiana has had low tuition. Now that's changing also, so students are having to incur more debt. So we are at the bottom of the Southern Board, and we are also number 49 or 50 in the bottom from national rankings. During the legislative session, the case is going to be made for the value of higher education. What is the value of higher education in Louisiana? Well, it, it, the value is an economic imperative. In other words, if this state wants to uh, progress toward the future, you have to be able to fill the jobs that are coming here and attract businesses, and that takes a talented and educated workforce. Without universities, that workforce won't exist.